Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Good job. That's pretty good. Whoa, you're pretty good. Our other loader had a breakdown, so I'm using the big, big loader for chores this morning. It's about as big as the, it's as wide as the whole feed, feed wagon. So we took this piece off. Now our loader's missing a cylinder, but we took the pins out. They come out this way, and then that pin's out. So down here checking heifers at my dad's house, they spooked themselves and ran to the other end of the pen. Um, so they got they got slick bunks. Anyways. Even these pins that weren't didn't have cattle in them until December, first week of December, are muddy. Here's uh, 10 heifers we custom fed for a guy while he was waiting for a slot at a uh, finishing yard. They're coming to pick these up this week. And here's uh, their two pins. These ones, my dad must have overfed them this morning. They're still cleaning up. Usually they're cleaned up by, it's 11.30 right now. Usually they're cleaned up by even 10.30. So these are the two with the bigger cattle in them. These two pens here. This is pen seven and pen eight. They'll sell in January sometime. This is what the wheat looks like up close. Gotta be pretty tough. Uh, ice and snow on it for several months. It's happy to have the moisture. This is second year wheat. There are some of these old there now, grazing. Cows are out here grazing over at Greg's. I'm taking a look at him for the first time in a couple weeks. He's been the one delivering the protein supplement to him and checking mineral and water and stuff. But today it's me and I'm happy to get a look at him. Their body score looks good. The count was right. And now I'm going to look at the heifers. We have some heifers, bred heifers running with them. And I just want to make sure they look like they're gaining weight as well because they need to gain not only weight for their calf but they're still growing their frame so there's a couple white face heifers pile around those distillers there's our water source they're sharing it with those geese but uh, that's, that's pretty full of pond i mean it's not as full as it's ever been but it's a lot more full than the ponds and our pastures. They're running on this whole, I suppose it's about a half section. There's ingredients mixing up. It's not all the way full, but it's almost full. We're using the backup loader, which has got a lot of power. Our bulldozer on the farm, but it works. It is a little bit harder to be precise because the bucket's a little wider. An oversized loader is still a lot better than the undersized uh, tractor bucket. Brighton's turn. Where's Brighton? 
Where'd she go? It is the day after the uh, K-State Bowl game, and Kendall and I are on a and road trip. Won. Oh yeah, K-State won, and ate a Pop-Tart to celebrate. I've had several flavors of So did we. We all, we all had Pop-Tarts too. Uh, but uh, we are on a road trip this uh, afternoon slash this morning uh, to North Dakota, to Linton, North Dakota, to speak at a uh, customer appreciation event. Uh, so it's been a nice long drive this morning. We've taken some shifts. Kendall took first shift, and I went back to sleep, and then I drove for a while. Yeah, we meandered through Nebraska. We hit I-90 for a little bit, and now we're back going north. So. Yep. Went through Gregory, South Dakota, so my town, my kind of town anyway. Yeah. What was what was your favorite town we went through? Town? Yeah, pick a town. Um. Well, we ate. Uh, in, uh, where did we eat? Uh, it, was by, it was right east of Gregory. I liked when we stopped to eat. I was yeah. pretty hungry. We haven't really done much. It's pretty much been driving with no stops. Made it to Pierre. I was telling Kendall, it's not Pierre. It's not Pierre, South Dakota. It's Pierre, South Dakota. I learned that the first time I came here. It seems like they've had a lot of snow. Look at that. There was the AeroQuip dealer. There's a sail barn on the other side of the sail tracks. barn on the other side of the train. There's a perfectly shaped pile of snow. Actually, I'm guessing. It's what does it look corn. like? Corn. Corn. I'm guessing corn. We're in Selby. We've been to Selby before. And Greg thought we'd stayed in a. I've been to Selby. I don't know if you have. Greg's been to Selby. Stayed in that hotel back there. We're in the last town in South Dakota. Next stop, North Dakota. Harried. Hurried? Don't harried? Don't get harried through harried. Not a bad view, North Dakota. Not a bad view. We made it. And look who we parked by. So since we were speaking in North Dakota, uh, we decided to meet up with some farm rescue guys. Um, Farm Rescue started up here in North Dakota, I believe. And so we're going here at our hotel, we're gonna go in and do a quick interview with them since we recently started partnering with uh, Farm Rescue uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, what it is what it is Farm Rescue does. All right, they said they'd meet us in the lobby here. Oh, well, how's man. it going? <laughs> yeah, I'm Greg, nice to meet you. Greg, nice to meet you, Tim Sullivan, Farm Rescue. This is Gary Deckard, one of our longtime volunteers. He's out of Bismarck here, the Lyre family. Um, we got Larry Lyre here, and uh, we've helped them a couple different times, and then uh, Larry is a, a good volunteer for us. And this is his son, Nathan. So how did Farm Rescue get started, and when, when how many years ago did it start? So um, it did start in 2005. Um, our founder, Bill Gross, he's a UPS airline captain um, mm -hmm. currently, and uh, he was flying one of his uh, northern Asian routes, and. Uh, with his co-pilot, they came up with the idea of Farm Rescue. Um, he wanted to, he's not, uh, grew up not too far from here at Cleveland, North Dakota, North Dakota farm boy that uh, during the 80s, like a lot of us, uh, uh, farming went through a tough um, gig there. And so he wasn't able to, um, you know, go into the family operations. So he became a, an airline pilot. And this is uh, started in 2005. Um, it was initially set up to just uh, do be, be a do-gooder and help farmers uh, just that needed help. But soon we found out uh, right away that um, there's more out there that needs to be handled. And so what we do at Farm Rescue is we, um, we support farm and ranch families that are going through some type of a, um, experiencing some type of crisis. It could be a major illness of some kind, an injury, or a natural disaster. Uh, it could be flood. Um, storms, anything like that. To date, we've done over a thousand rescues. How many states now? Is over eight or ten, maybe? Yep, we are in eight currently, but in 2024, we'll enter the state of um, Wisconsin. That'll be our ninth state. So, Gary, you're one of the uh, volunteers for Farm Rescue. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the services that that they offer? Uh, we do planting crops like wheat, barley, 
soybeans. We do combining bale hay, and then we do trucking of hay too, natural disasters. We just, we get volunteers from all over the United States to come in with each one of them when they can come, and uh, they come anywhere from three or four days to a couple of weeks, and we've got a couple of volunteers that come for a month at a time. So what, what all is involved in the, the logistics of, of putting that together? Either a family member or a neighbor, they'll contact Farm Rescue and we have a form that they fill out to qualify to be there and once they're qualified for whatever they want, you know, whatever the reason be, whether it be a, somebody that's got cancer and the family can't be there, so we'll come in and we'll, say in the spring of the year, we'll plant their crop for them, we'll plant up to a thousand acres to help them out, and then we furnish the equipment and the manpower, and John Deere has been a big sponsor of ours. They uh, that the tractors that we buy and get from them. It's just amazing what John Deere has stepped up. So what circumstances led to Farm Rescue coming and helping you guys out? So way back in 2008, I had to have uh, back surgery in, in Minnesota, and that's what led to Farm Rescue coming. Right at harvest time, and Farm Rescue came in combined our wheat for us. The second time was 2011 when they came. Yeah. His younger sister was also diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia. It's a form of different, there's several forms of muscular dystrophy. She was diagnosed and then they came in the spring and, and seeded our wheat crop. Mm -hmm. When the volunteers came, we couldn't find words thank them enough for what they did for us. Now that I'm a volunteer and I've been helping on a few cases, I know where they're, what they were talking about. It's a good feeling when you can volunteer and go and help another family that's suffering some kind of crisis. So what's the most meaningful part of um, doing this? Yeah, I tell you, it, uh, I've been in the ag side of the business for many, many years, my whole career. Um, but, uh, you know, it's always been for profit and w working with a nonprofit um, is totally different. And your heart has to be totally 100% involved in what you do. And we see that with all our volunteers. We see that with our, our staff and our sponsors and partners that help us. That makes the world a difference for me because it's like one big machine. It can't work without each one of those parts working together. Very thankful to everyone involved and, and uh, we continue to grow geographically and take on more and more cases each year and uh, we're proud to do that. And what's the what's the best way that our YouTube viewers can, can help you guys out? Go to our website at farmrescue.org org, and there you can see updates on where we're at for you know the season, who we're helping in a particular week, um, we could be in Kansas, we could be in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, or now Wisconsin coming up. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, anybody in those areas can follow us. And uh, the reach that uh, the Peterson Farm Brothers has is huge. And that can really uh, boost for people looking for the services that we can offer. Um, it's a trust factor. If uh, if you guys know what we do, they see you, there's an instant trust there, and it's easier for that family to say yes. Because farmers are, by nature, very prideful people. And it's really tough to say yes. And I know Larry can uh, attest to you know how hard it is to say yes to help. The thing is, they're helping more and more people by doing that. Look at the history over the last 18 years with uh, over 1,000 families that have been supported. Um, you know, it, it works and it works very well. Yeah, well, I know in our home county just a few years ago, there, there was a farm rescue combine park there and we knew the family that was helped. And, and so it's, it's far reaching, it's, it's impacted us locally and, and uh, we appreciate all that you guys do for sure. Yeah, so that was probably Prairie Land Parkers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we partner with different franchise John Deere dealerships around the country. This is how we get our logistics taken care of. Um, we go to them <clears throat> with supporting through leases and a demo program where we can actually um, get that equipment, put so many hours on it, return it to the dealership, cleaned up, and they've already got it pre-sold and down the road. 
but um, that really helps us to get the job done where we don't have to be transporting a combine from North Dakota all the way to Kansas to take care of um, you know several people down there so um, right now um, with uh, close to nine states we are this year we leased seven combines we own one and so we had eight running at the same time a lot of weeks and uh, we'll add one more combine for Wisconsin. So we are supported by uh, veteran volunteers like Gary um, that uh, have helped out for several years. What is it, 10 years now, 13 Gary? years. 13 years, 13 years, wow. And uh, you know, it's just amazing. They keep coming back year after year, but we always have new people wanting to get involved. And it's very important to let them know that they are welcome. We want new volunteers on every case just because it's going to be, we, we need new leaders in that area. And their expertise is gonna be invaluable to us uh, going forward. All right, well, um, if you haven't checked out Farm Rescue, uh, make sure to go check out their website and, and uh, learn the different ways you can support what they're doing. Uh, and if you could, just share this video so that the word gets out there about what they're doing. I think awareness is one of the easiest things that um, anybody can provide uh, just by sharing this message and and uh, getting the word out there about what Farm Rescue does. But we really appreciate them as an organization, and uh, we plan on continuing to um, support and promote what they do. And they've served over 1,000 families so far, and I'm sure they're uh, really excited to serve the next 1,000 families. And so this video can just barely scratch the surface of the impact that that's had on all those uh, families and communities. One of the hardest parts when you get done helping at a case is saying the goodbyes. Uh, they're so appreciative of what we have done for them. Uh, there's a lot of hugs and tears, and it's just really, really tough to leave. And, you know, they really appreciate what we have done for them. All right, now we are heading to our speaking event, just a couple miles down the road from Linton, North Dakota. All right, we're getting, we got a nice uh, steak. Prime rib dinner. Prime rib yeah. dinner before we perform. Looks like uh, there are NDSU fans here, so. We're gonna have to, uh, Give a Chris Kleiman shout out from uh, SK State Wildcats. One, two, three, four, track One, two, three, four, track Let's hear the people in the back. Three, four, track One, two, three, four, track Getting to watch the sunrise. Been next, driving. Next morning. Been driving almost an hour. Our speaking last night went pretty good. Um, we were at a, a customer appreciation event for uh, Maverick Ag, which, so they, they got all their customers together and we were the entertainment. There's a lot of young families there, a lot of kids. A lot of young shirts. kids, so so we uh, we performed our, our parodies. We talked a little bit about you know what we do and some of the things we've learned and then um, did about an hour long meet and greet afterward. And so Kendall and I both kind of wore out our voices both a little tired this morning but uh, we got up at 6 30 or so and the sun's just now rising we've been driving for an hour it's kind of relaxing to drive with nobody on the road it's pretty nice yeah been pretty empty roads are we back into south dakota yet oh yeah oh we are yeah could call you if i if i make it worse by trying to fix it <laughs> Stopped for lunch at Firehouse Bakery and Cafe in uh, Butte, Nebraska. All right, Kendall, what'd you get? I got the beef Philly and cheese balls, like cheese curds. Looks amazing. Oh, that's good. I got breakfast. Even though it's I noon. Got, I got a video of the Firehouse guy. In the oh, yeah. Well, Greg didn't come back. I uh, stopped. For some gas, he left the car and I came back, so I guess I'll just leave him in Nebraska. There he is. I almost left him in this town in Nebraska. Anybody recognize what town we're in? We are in... Oh, it doesn't say. Oh. Genoa. Genoa. All right, we are in New York. Home of the big hot air balloon water tower. Gateway to the Kansas border. Kind of. Yeah, not really. You know you're almost home when you get to yours. Yeah, it's a pretty common stop for us. 
being a little over, well, it's two-ish something hours from home. So whether we're on our way somewhere or whether we're on our way back. There it is. Cargill Elevator. That's how we know we're home, baby. Thanks for watching, everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.